It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker! Yo, man! Boom, it's Rusty! It is Monday morning, best day besides Sunday, I guess probably Sunday is good. Uh, especially if you live in a place where there's a lot of people busy on Sundays. And uh, it's time here for the podcast, the podcast here on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN, with other great shows such as When the Gloves Come Off, the Thinking, Man Pro- Thinking Man's Pro Wrestling Podcast, This Is It with Lizzie, Say by the Ben, and with our sponsors, Fred Ben Savage's fuck, sockemup.org, Stoner Eats Productions, Hardcore Entertainment, and Hypnosis is great. I know I got all those. There's five. And and once we have more sponsors, then it's gonna be I gotta remember more. But five is a good number right now. Five is my favorite number. So there you go. You got a five near me. I got five on it. I liked number five before I got five on it before I heard the loonies. So that's not what today's about. We're not going to be talking about going back to some uh, old rap, but who knows? Maybe we will. Today, I'm going to bring on my special guest right here and right now. A special guest, special guest, that special guest is Freddy Cruz. How you doing, Freddy Cruz? That's what every podcast needs. That uh, I, I should just go and edit that into my intro. Just you, put that on. You know, I've always wondered what because okay, so as someone who works with sound and mm-hmm. has access to all the sound effects and all the things you could you could ever want or need to use to create whatever sound you want to create. I have a sound like an air horn sound effect, but I've always wondered because they're so freaking loud. How do you get it to where it isn't distorted and blows out and destroys your ten thousand dollar studio monitors? It's 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 like the eternal question because it's so ridiculous. Like I was at a graduation uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and someone blew an air horn, and I knew that it was way up top but it still felt like it was right next to me yes i mean does someone have to do it from outside uh you know maybe just be able to hear it through the through the walls or something but yeah yeah i mean that that's that's a loud there's work this voodoo right that's what i want to know that too and i i don't know is it uh an artificial made up sound you know, that someone came up with somehow with some sort of circuit bending what the uh, artificial air horn sounds like they've got this app I, actually i used to have this app i don't know if it's if it still exists because it didn't transfer to my new phone at the time but it's called the ham horn and so it sounds digitized okay so beep, 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 but it sounds like a digital air horn it doesn't sound authentic so when people are doing the authentic air horn, are they going and pressing it down like, duh, 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 like sort of like a, like you're taking a picture on a, on an old camera? Is that what they're doing? Or Pro- probably, I can't imagine anyone would want even want to keep it keep the the button down for longer than a half a second because it's it's just so ridiculously loud, man. Right. I mean, especially it's... yeah, yeah, it, yes, especially if you're at a in a closed arena or whatever the wherever the graduation was i mean that's uh of course man it's ridiculous yeah there's a so have you you've been able to make any what what's kind of your your wildest sound you've been able to make uh with some sort of i don't know uh in some sense with that you maybe made into something to put on your, well, your program. 
Yeah, so I don't really do that kind of stuff anymore. I used to work in radio. I was in radio for 26 years. And I, okay, so the, the, the job title was image director. And so we would create all the whiz bangy sounds in between songs and write and produce concert promos and contesting promos. And so we had a lot of fun, uh, particularly on 4th of July and uh, Halloween and Christmas, because that's when you could really think outside the box as much as I hate the cliche, but it's really when you can just let loose and do whatever the hell you want. And you can write what you want, uh, so long as you don't violate FCC rules, you can uh, really get weird with the copy. And so what I used to love to do, there's this thing on Pro Tools called uh, Verify. It's a plugin. So you could take a voice and and slow it down. So it would be, for instance, um, you know, this Halloween, listen to the public access channel with Rusty Diamond. And so you can make it sound like as if, it's a human going into some kind of demon and then reverse wise, you can speed it up. And so that's just one of the several ways we would, you know, manipulate audio and sync it up to beats and prefab sound effects and make it sound like all hell was breaking loose and whatnot. It's a lot of fun. It's one of the few things I miss about the old world. Did you ever have any go-tos or, or anything? Um... That was just sort of that you use like as a template, or did it change up most every time? Did you always have it like maybe there's one song you like doing a whole bunch over and over, and um, or just kind of random? Yeah, because things would always change. But I mean, we had so there there are people who there are companies who this is what this is all they do is make those sound effects, and uh, okay. I don't know but with the licensing, with the music and ASCAP and all that. Uh, but you subscribe to the website. So it could be, it could be Rusty's creative sound works or whatever. And let's say Maroon 5 is on tour for 2023 in the fall. And Rusty's got free a prefab 30 second um, template production. And then Freddie's like, ooh, I'm pressed for time. So I'm gonna use Rusty's template. Uh, and I'm going to use the copy that he suggests. And then I'm just, all I'm going to do is have my voice guy read verbatim and then plug my call, my station identification at the beginning and end. And so that's kind of how we went, how we got through some of that. So yeah, there, is, there are uh, many templates, but as someone who was hired to do the job and write the original promo copy, um, I would only use the production. I would never use the copy. Very rarely, if the copy was really badass, I would use the, the copy. But uh, in 99% of cases, I was just right, whatever. Because I mean, we were also a local radio station um, in Houston, which is the fourth biggest uh, city in the, in the country, obviously. So our listeners don't want, um, didn't, uh, I'm not there anymore, but uh, we, it, it was, they wanted to be entertained and, and they could sniff out um, cookie cutter content from a mile away. That's why, that's why certain, that's why certain syndicated um, shows that shall remain nameless didn't, didn't last a year. Just because they knew it was just sort of phoning it in i mean syndication is kind of phoning it in for the for the most part in a way yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah no exactly no that's exactly what that is and more power to anybody who can get themselves syndicated um yeah. on a on a on a radio on a radio station or a, across a radio network i think that's um incredible and, and you know truth be told a lot of these people do bust their asses to get to where they to where they were i mean um you could say that I was a syndicated producer at one point in time. I was producing for six different radio stations and it led to a train chemical attack. And then I went from six to three. So, and then down to two, but uh, no, it's, um, you know, people that get to that, to that situation, it's, um, it's cool. If, if it works for you, um, I think it's, 
I think it's phoning again and phoning it in for corporate because <laughs> at some point yeah. it always gets so big that they're like, oh, we'll just put Rusty on it. Okay, well, where's Rusty from? Rusty is uh, Rusty's from from Houston, Texas. Okay, well, does Houston, Texas translate well to North Dakota? Well, no, but who else is who else we're we gonna get? Freddie? Freddie's not available in that market. <laughs> okay, yeah, put Rusty on it. And while you're at it, put him in both Dakotas. Yeah, and uh, then you got me. Like then everyone in Dakota is going, "Who's this asshole?" Uh, well, they're trying to, you know, feed me uh, finger sticks or steak fingers. Yeah. I don't remember which one it is. They're so. Have you heard of these? They're uh, they're uh, in in Idaho. They're called one thing, but in Montana and uh, in the Dakotas, they're called steak fingers one of them steak fingers one finger steaks but it's basically little pieces of steak that are about it's sort of like uh almost like the chicken fries at kfc that quality thing but they're little deep deep battered or battered deep fried pieces of steak with uh like a gravy you put over it like a like a sausage breakfast gravy kind of thing but Okay, yeah, so I, I could. I've never heard of that though, man. Someone they okay. So which states call it finger steaks? I've always thought it was steak fingers. Yeah, there's so there's one. I think I think it's Idaho that does it backwards, or it's one or the other. So if they call it steak fingers, so finger steaks, it's the same thing, but it, for some reason it was, uh, they, it was better. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, so I I have a little bit of something there and. In North Dakota, or you know, or I don't know. I was a uh, interesting place. It was interesting drive through driving through Dakotas. I, I only drove to North Dakota. I didn't go through South Dakota, but yeah, North Dakota. That's a trip up there, man. It's uh, pretty beautiful. I drove from Oregon to Minnesota, yeah, and yeah, drove through Montana and North Dakota and. And that was wild. That was a, uh, it's beautiful up there. There's nothing up there. If you like, if you like nothing, it's a good, good place. If you like nothing, then you um, know, yeah. My, Minnesota for three years. We had our first daughter up there, and the second one was made up there. We tell her that she was made up there. Um, but before we moved back to Houston, we had uh, just for shits and grins because yep. you no, know, when we were ever going to make it back up north, we're like. <laughs> You want to go to Mount Rushmore? Yeah, let's do it. So I forget. Okay, she's she's right. She's right here. Was it Fourth of July weekend or Memorial weekend or Liberty Day? Oh no, Memorial Day weekend. We drove with a newborn baby who was probably five months, six months old. We had no idea she was pregnant with the second, and we drove twelve hours from Minneapolis, uh, technically Minnetonka. So from the Minneapolis St. Paul area to uh was it rapid city and yeah rapid city and we got there and it's like okay cool now what? <laughs> and yeah he's like okay well there's yeah there's the side of the, the mountain okay there uh, was crap out there dude to your point there's nothing but i mean it was nice it was peaceful more than anything yeah, yeah. so so going back to when did you leave minnesota 2005 made it back to houston just in time for katrina perfect i i was up in toronto so i, I was in katrina too just uh i was at the very tail i wasn't you know i don't really count that but uh so you <laughs> got there right for katrina and uh so uh let, let me get to that here one second so have you been up there to minnesota in the last like five years or so uh I've yeah going on six years actually since the last time we went because we we took our our daughters up there like hey let's go let's go back to where you were born <laughs> uh so we went up there they were a little older um visited this is something we never did when we lived over there we went to paisley park i was and, that's, that's the whole thing i was getting to right there was did you go to paisley park dude it was it was something man <laughs> Yeah, for anyone that has any sort of sound engineering, anything, that place is fucking mind blowing. Like just <laughs> yeah. how much, and then 
you know, just and then walking into the, the studio is just, I don't know, I could have stayed in there uh, longer, definitely. And, you know, every there was every room had um, like a recording device in it, like, and, you know, so he could, if he was, you know, taking a shit or something, he could be able to, you know, come up and come up with his next little you know, melody or whatever he comes up with or something and just be able to hit that right there. But, and that yeah. place was cool. And then no, no cameras in there, no phones in there. That, that was a, a nice touch too. Um, yeah. So, something like how, the experience that, that you're, that don't, don't, it, not everything needs to be put out there. Savor right. it, you know, treasure it. Yeah, and then you don't have someone while you're trying to experience what's going on. You don't have someone in front of you going like, <laughs> you know, get get some. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're at Paisley Park, and it's so great. <laughs> yeah, and it was it just made the experience uh, so much cooler, and so. Yeah, that, that's something I'll, I'll tell for yeah anyone. If you're going to Minnesota, I mean, um, I don't know if, you, if you're going up there somewhere, you, you have to check out. Um, so, okay. So then, okay. So then you were in Hurricane Katrina. So that was September 2005, right? Something like yeah. that. So yeah. what, was, what was that like down there then? And well, we, so we're, we did, we, we had stayed with my, with my in-laws for my sister, my brother and sister-in-law um, for about two weeks until we figured out what we were, what the next move was going to be. And I forget whether or not, did we, did we plan the two weeks or was that because, or was that because of the hurricane? I feel like it was because, because of the hurricane. Yeah, I think it was because of the hurricane. So we were, we stayed with them in their house. Um, and then, yeah, because our furniture got rerouted. So instead of a straight shot from Minneapolis down to Houston, down the 35, down, like all the way. So instead of a straight shot, it was, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. So it was. what did that do for your price of the moving? Did that affect it or was that something no, that, that you already paid and? so yeah i was lucky i've been really dude i've been really lucky <laughs> except for post radio not very lucky but no they yeah they 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 took care of all that um it was more than anything it was a pain in the ass but nothing it was just a drop in the bucket compared to what a lot of other people had gone through i mean this oh yeah. boot furniture couldn't get here well guess what we're homeless yeah yeah <laughs> so, it was yeah, oh, my, pretty you know yeah yeah no that yeah that was that was just nothing and we didn't really think anything of it it was you know it was a minor inconvenience at that we were with our family and you know we had you know it, and i was put i was put to work right away so i there was really no time to figure figure out you know okay well this is what we're gonna do so. yeah just go go right to work long time ago man it's almost 20 years ago yeah right yeah that's it's crazy like, yeah how fast that went and yeah um who who to thunk it and so um yeah i mean so you're you're in houston now and you've been there for almost 20 years then and yeah we we're born and raised and right now we're vacationing in florida but yeah we oh, okay We've lived in Houston. My wife and I have lived there all our lives, minus the three years that we spent in Minneapolis. So what was it like when they said, hey, you're going to be moving to Minneapolis? You got a job opportunity in Minneapolis. Where, how were you? Uh, how did that work for you going from, Minne or from Houston to Minneapolis? It was it was something that um, it was a job opportunity and I seized on it and we, my wife and I were really not we weren't even married a year and we moved up there so it was a different company and um, 
And so it was a full-time production gig, not on the radio. I was doing midnight to four, wasn't really happy. And uh, saw that the job opening was there. Thought I'd take it or try it, try for it. And they liked me. And uh, not even a month after we had moved up there, um, keep in mind, this wasn't a, an on-air position. It was for production. So yeah. I thought I'd over. And, and there, yeah, so our afternoon guy is no longer with us. What would you think about doing afternoon drive on KDWB until we find our new guy? I'm like, afternoon? It's cool. I'll do it. Whoa. Yeah, so, um, and <laughs> it was nice. It was fun. Did uh did he ever go down? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I didn't do it the whole three years. It was just temporary. Okay. Um, did you ever go down to Austin, Minnesota, uh, and go to the spam museum? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's that's where uh I ended up. So I was in Bloomington for um moved there in 2019. And I was there for a bit and then uh, and then COVID hit and uh, it was like, well, uh, lost the job and it's like, okay, well, now what do we do? And so we were looking at places and we ended up, one of the places we were looking at was, uh, we were going to, let's check Minneapolis out. And it was, um, it would have been on the same block where the George Floyd stuff happened and we would have moved in the day before, but uh, decided, yeah, let's go out into the country. Let's go move out in the country. And so, yeah, went down to Austin and uh, lived right next to the spam rendering plant. So got to, uh, I don't know. I never tried spam until I lived there. And after yeah. smelling and they love it over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the whole town is or like, you know, like half the town works there, half works for the Mayo Clinic. And uh, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. And like, I don't know. I don't think I ever want to eat spam again. I I tried it. <laughs> and because, yeah, I lived right next to the, the rendering plant. So I would smell, you know, oh. pig being fucking slaughtered every day and then with the hot humidity so you open the front door and you just get this big waft of hot pig uh pig whatever i don't know pig killing and uh so yeah i don't and then i went to what there were, they like had a whole bunch of restaurants there that uh serve spam and i went to this restaurant and they had uh fried spam i just could get and it was three pieces i ate one and a half i went to take a bite and i smelled the slaughterhouse i put it down and i'm like i'm done i'm never eating spam again i'm done with this Rest it's, uh... held soul. <laughs> yeah yep that was that was it it was like no more no more spam i'm i'm good on that one and so um so then um, so you get down to houston and so you're you're right back uh what did uh i mean what what did what had changed in the few years that did anything change or was it back to kind of business as usual yeah it was just back to business as usual the only thing different was me you know my my wife and i were already married when we left and it was the, my second time at that radio station and so my wife and i were already married by then so they they knew her it's not like any it wasn't the only thing different was that we had babies yeah. Um, and I was and I was offered the afternoon drive position um, there. I wasn't doing overnights. So I was doing production and uh, and on air. And so kind of, oh, go ahead. The job kept changing for 16 years. I was there for a really long time. Um, you know, I can't it's in my past, but I you know, you can't run away from who you are. So a lot of a lot of. Um, a lot of that still lingers over me um, and some what small success I've had. It's because of the people that I met while I was over there. Um, you know, I'm still doing my own thing. And so, yeah. 
was that a or what kind of station was it was it like a, or what kind of music was it it's top 40 top top 40 drive time damn okay so um i mean <laughs> yeah you got you got a lot of people uh and so what i mean what what was your 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 gimmick were you uh were you working by yourself or were you with someone else? Were you like the straight guy or the fucking the wacky dude? Or uh, what was, what was kind of your, your I was never really the wacky dude. Um, I just tried to have fun and, and try to really make the listeners part of the show. And so we, I'd run phone calls over, over intros. And, and so it was always a, a blend of that. Um, I wouldn't say straightforward, the straightforward, what we would call them. Well, I shouldn't say we. I mean, that's how much radio is a part of me. I always say we. Um, yeah. But in the industry, they call them liner jocks, where all they do is just read what's given to them. Uh, was never really a liner jock. Um, so I just tried to make make the show my own and make listeners as big of a, a part of it as possible. And sometimes the, the phones were heavy. Sometimes they were light. And um, I'd recycle stuff. And... It's funny being in the LinkedIn space and, and TikTok space and the creator space, how people are like, oh, repurpose your content, repurpose your content. And it's it's interesting because in radio, they're like, never replay a phone call. <laughs> and I mean, that in phone calls, that's basically your content, you're creating content. That's exactly what that is. Um, right. for, but if you have to wait a minimum week long, and it was always this thing I was I just, Oh, miserable human beings on these Facebook uh, radio groups. Uh, no offense if you're a part of one. Uh, oh, shit. But anything, any excuse to pick apart their colleagues and just tear them down. It's like, how about you put that same energy into your show and maybe just maybe you wouldn't suck and get laid <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> pretty uh pretty easy to get into that mentality if that's all you're thinking about is just how to oh, shit on everything and yeah not not like oh it must be someone else's fault that that this thing isn't fucking doing well and um did you so when you had people calling in what did you have a delay or anything some sort of delay no so do you have people calling in saying really messed up stuff Oh God, no, 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 no. Everything was pre-recorded. I was never, I wasn't alive. It wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, although I have done live talk shows before and I don't know that I've ever had to hit the delay button. Um, I know wow. the morning show people would have, would occasionally have to hit the delay button and then remind, kindly remind people that you can't say fuck on the radio. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, if a curse word ever made it on during my show, yeah, it was because I missed something and I will get in big trouble. But that's never happened. Although I will tell you that the lady who I uh, who was my supervisor, she somehow the volume to the phone line got turned on and it had so <laughs> going back to how just how messed up the thing. The whole system was you had to have the volume turned up all the way the the fader yep. but it on so it just but it had the volume had to be up you couldn't turn the volume down you couldn't pull the, the fader down it's oh. seriously only recorded into the into the system if the volume was up but it had to be off because if it was on it would go on over the air so she inadvertently had it on i guess maybe her papers or something turned the button on she was taking information from a contest winner and it was a big prize so we had to get her social security number and as you might guess yes the lady you know was like okay so what's your social security number one two three four five six seven eight nine oh, over Whoa. the <laughs> of all things of all things <laughs> so what happened then I mean, uh, did she notice or I can fire herself? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm just walking off right now. I, I, I fucked up pretty bad. 
someone's someone's gonna be getting a few phone calls here uh, but i mean no she you know obviously apologized profusely for what happened because that's that's kind of a big deal to have your social security number leaked out over a uh yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, no, nobody got in trouble. So, and she was the the listener was cool. Wow, good for yeah. the listener. Good for the listener on that one. Yeah, um, dude. Of all, I, and it's like, do you realize if that was anybody else, they would have been fired. Oh, yeah. they would have been fired, man. <laughs> yeah, she got like tickets to a Taylor Swift concert or something for that, or it was know. a. I don't know man but it was a high value it was a high value um prize for her to have to get the social so it was oh, she, probably, it was so. easy five hundred dollars or more we because the, I, I say again we um going back if it wasn't if it was just movie tickets or or shit if it was concert tickets to i don't know um what? I, here artists they still wouldn't get get your social they, they used to back in the day and then i think there's a lot a lot of pushback from people like why the fuck do you need my social for movie tickets bro right and <laughs> because well we're going to use it for other stuff we got uh yeah we're going to be yeah purposes yeah <laughs> yeah save them for uh some marketing stuff see uh who wants to buy that and um so then uh, closure they never did that Never did and that. That's not me accusing anybody of anything. I just right. throw them in. <laughs> okay. It's out there. And so yeah. then you you got out of radio and uh did you go right into podcasting? Or was there was there I mean podcasting, it seems like it wasn't that I mean podcasting was a thing when you got out of radio then, I assume. Oh yeah, podcasting's been around since I think 2004, 2005, but you know, I just uh um they made me an offer I could refuse and I refused it. Uh and so I got out while it was still fun and the meeting that I had was with the same lady who we were talking about and we were pretty close. Uh, so close in fact that her husband and I would share private text messages with one another. So I mean and so I was when I say when I say I'm lucky, I was really lucky to, to have the, the career that I had. Um, but I just, you know, I wasn't gonna do what they wanted me to do. Um, for what yeah. yeah. Diplomatically speaking, I got out while it was fun. And so when we had that meeting, it was in early November, and I thought, well, you know, uh, I'm an award-winning radio personality and producer. Um, my stations won two Marconi awards. And so how fucking hard could it be to get a job in a related field? Apparently really hard because by the end of the year, um, I was up to 20 something rejections, um, and couldn't find a gig. And so then I was like, oh, talking to my wife, I'm all right, honey, February, March at the very latest, still nothing. Uh, so May comes around and, uh, I'm up to 50, 50 something rejections. And I'm like, all right, God, what's going on? Um, is this some kind of sign? What are you telling me? So I decided to just start a company um, so that I wasn't doing only job searching. Um, and so, yeah, I started the company, but getting into podcasting to your original question, it was um, <clears throat> between November, <clears throat> between November and May, I was convinced that I was going to go into corporate America doing something um communications public relations um i tried getting a job with podcast uh companies doing audio production um and so i had started a podcast just for shits and grins to treat as a full-time gig and to give me something to do uh in between looking for jobs and um and maintain and foster the relationships I have with PR firms. I mean, I knew some people who got me some pretty big name guests. And um, so I was like, I'll just, I'll hang out, you know, and do this until I find a gig. And if I find a gig and I've still enjoyed doing the podcast then I'll probably scale it back to one a week. And I never found a, a job and I'm still, I'm still collecting rejections. 
Like I got a job rejection from the Sugarland Space Cowboys that I forgot that I had applied for the job. <laughs> like, oh, okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, well, now, now I remember. <laughs> yeah, and but I mean, you also now don't have anyone telling you what to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got you. You have your freedom to do whatever. So what? What was the part that you got to be? really uh enact your freedom of podcasting as opposed to the radio or was there anything i don't know that there was anything i mean you know it's funny because i had i had a conversation with some i guess i can get i can get as nerdy as i want and not that i wasn't allowed to get nerdy at my old you know with my previous employer um but i could really talk to whoever I want and not why and, and, and I'm really um I'm hesitant to say that too because they really let me get away with whatever I wanted to do um and I was never an asshole um so I wasn't one of those guys where if the national tragedy happened I would just pounce on the opportunity to start beating my chest about whatever opinion I had on it I yeah. did that among <laughs> friends <laughs> but right. now Never try and impose uh, an ideology on anybody. Um, so they, in that regard, I really got to do whatever I wanted. I, I had almost um, about as much creative freedom as you could give somebody. Um, yeah. And they, and I think it was that way because they knew I wasn't going to go off the rails and be an asshole. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> um. Uh, so yeah. Um, it was I was my my judgment as far as guests because I did have in the uh, the the last six years of uh, my career there I had a Sunday morning show which was a public affairs show and so I talked to a lot of um, nonprofit or uh, nonprofit founders and CEOs and executive directors and um, in the quest to make the show interesting and different I would. Um, talk to a lot of mom mom and pops uh, like smaller organizations because there are only so many American cancer societies in the world um, so I would find organizations and and give them their my time if I was at a in a drive through for a, uh, at a coffee shop and I saw a flyer for a fundraiser for a little girl that they were going to have a 5k race for this uh, little girl who had a heart condition that was rare uh, I'd be like you know what I want to talk to their parents and so I would uh, take a picture of the flyer and reach out to them and have them on the show. And that was how, kind of how I built the community. And part of the reason why I think, um, you know, a year and a half later, no one's, I mean, not like, not like I have legions of fans, but whenever I go places, there's, you know, a chance that someone might still remember me and why I still get invited to do, uh, I still get invited to do things out in the communities, you know, kind of because yeah. i that rep i think that's important too to have that bit of um you know if, especially if you can if you can go and get the community uh whether it's someone that's yeah like i mean anyone that's in the community who can benefit from a platform of being able to have their voice heard in more places and then yeah, like you're saying, there's only so many American cancer societies, and and it's um, no do great work. I just that was like the first thing to come to my mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you and, know, that yeah. beauty of podcasting, Rusty, is that everybody has a voice, and now with I think especially now because you know again, podcasting has been around for close to 20 years, and I heard a very well known entrepreneur with millions and millions of fans who said this just recently that it was too late to get into podcasting and as someone who runs a podcast agency and i've got a few clients as someone who runs a podcast agency i find it offensive because there are depending on the study that you read there are some two and a half million uh if you are going to go on the high end two and a half million podcasts in existence um and then there are between 
450 to 750,000. So 450,000 to 750,000 active podcasts, like shows that are consistent like yours, that are consistently putting out episodes all the time. So yeah. that, that if we just go conservatively speaking, 450,000 podcasts out of two and a half million that are actually <clears throat> that are actually putting in the work or didn't give up because they don't have fucking Joe Rogan numbers. <laughs> right. it's, it's in the game, dude. And so I think about it. If it's uh, and I forget if it's two thousand. I think it's two thousand four when uh, when Mark Goodman had the first podcast. Uh, if not two thousand four, it was definitely two thousand five. So uh, let's just say two thousand four. So nineteen years. So not even twenty years that we've had podcasts, bro. And um, yeah. right about radio that was back in the early 30s right so we're like we're like the elementary school kid trying to figure out what we want to do with ourselves and so i think that this is still very much a wild west of opportunities for people to to launch their show so you've got your thing going i've got my new podcast that's going to be focused on the houston area but dude if there was um somebody who uh wanted to talk about 1980s cartoons they could do that and find a, a local toy manufacturer and get them to sponsor their gig. Um, one of my clients is uh, a funeral history museum, and they're out of Houston. And so yeah. like the riches being in the niches, if you've got a very interesting take on something, you don't have to be just an organization or a museum or a business. You could be an individual personal brand that is launching their show. And sure, you might not get a million downloads an episode or even a thousand downloads an episode but if you love it and you just want to do it for the for the love of the game you can do that but if you have 500 to a thousand downloads and and engaged listens per episode you might be able to monetize that shit and you might not get rich off of it but um a thousand dollars a month is real fucking money dude and so when someone says that it's too late to get into podcasting i'm like Dude, kiss my ass. It's early. Yeah. Early and yeah, day. I mean, my rant is over, Rusty. Right. I, I like it. And see, then you can you can nerd out uh, the term or whatever it may be on people needing to get into podcasting and and the you know the strong need for it and being able to have so many new people. Cause I mean, you know, when we were in school, there was I mean, there was there was the radio. Like, did you think when you were a kid, I'm gonna get on the radio? That's something you wanted to do, or was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was actually something I wanted very much. Cool. So, this is sort of my origin story, and it goes back to being in seventh grade playing football. And in seventh grade, uh, that was a time when I had grown quicker than a lot of my buddies, and so I was a bigger kid. I'm very average now. I'm five nine. Everything about me is average. Um, five nine, dad bod, but whatever. I was I was like the bigger, almost kind of sort of a not really muscular kid. And so I was convinced that I was going to be like Bo Jackson. And I wanted to play baseball and I wanted to play football and I was going to kick everyone's ass. And so Coach Swanson has this talk with us in the locker room and it's the talk. And it's that 99.99% of you are not going to play in the NFL, much less college. So do good in school. And so after my ego was shattered, I thought, well, how can I still be around sports? And so that was TV. And I got a story. I'm going to piggyback on this. Um, cool. I wanted to be like Bob Allen, who was uh, the late Bob Allen, who was on TV uh, channel 13 that he eventually went to channel two before sadly he passed away from cancer uh, in 2016 and so I'm going to be like Bob Allen now forget Bo Jackson he's cool he's amazing I love him I watch him play sports and kick ass but I'm going to be like Bob and I'm going to be on tv and I'm going to be like the next sportscaster maybe even on ESPN well how do you get to TV? You got to get into radio as a stepping stone. Well, I got into radio, never got out because it was so much fun. Um, and so that was how I ended up being in the radio, on the radio for so long. I didn't get a communications degree. I got a marketing degree. Uh, I had interned for free at a radio station. And the guy was like, well, you have a job in radio. Why are you studying communications? 
well, it's a free internship. I'm not getting paid. Yes or no, do you have a job at a radio station? Yes. Okay, so stop wasting your parents' money and get a job in communication. Fair point. Okay, so I moved back from Sam Houston State and I moved back to Houston. And this is before my wife and I had ever met. And so I bounced around from community college to community college, eventually landed at U of H, changed my major to marketing. And that's how I met my wife in accounting class. The only good thing to ever come out of accounting class. <laughs> Going back to Bob Allen, um, all these years later, I'm on the board of, uh, of an equine therapy organization called A Place for Peanut, which was co-founded by the Bob Allen and his fiance, Megan Cardet. So you, you got you got to meet Bob Allen. Then. I never met Bob Allen. I never got to meet him. Okay. But I, I met Megan um, in 2017. Actually, I met Megan, I think, after 2017. I met her, one of her one of her um, cohorts, uh, Jane, um, because after Hurricane Harvey, the horses, they had gone viral because the horses uh, with Hurricane Harvey, they had to be evacuated. And there are many horses, um, so little tater tots. Oh, uh, and save from the floods. And so, yeah, they had people from that area go out and, and move the horses. The The property was uh, severely damaged and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, man, Megan is a boss. She, yeah. uh, she there's a story is probably my favorite story of her. Uh, there's a horse. His name is Cinnamon. Little. I mean, he He's for a horse the size the size of a Great Dane that's tiny, right? So yeah. she a little horse. She's what's okay. So backing up, what they do is they save horses from the slaughter pipeline, and they rehabilitate them, and they either adopt them out or they use them for uh, therapy for PTSD for veterans with PTSD or uh, people with cancer. And so cool. she went out in the middle of the night in her Mercedes SUV. And rescued this little this little ass horse and put the horse in the back of her SUV, which again, a, a Mercedes SUV, they're not that big unless it's a G Wagon, but she didn't she, it wasn't a G Wagon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a little mini SUV <laughs> horse in an SUV in the middle of the fucking night. And <laughs> saving this guy, this little guy from these monsters, man. It was great. Epic then, story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's probably the one of the only horses ever in a Mercedes. So, if we're being honest, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can't say for certain, but I have a pretty good, pretty good guess that that's the reason. So, did it's you ever, get to exactly, or that's ever ridden in a vehicle that's not a, an F one fifty? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then, did you get to tell her that uh, your uh, story about your origin story to her? Oh did yeah. Tell... Oh, heard that more than once. She's heard that. <laughs> In fact, we were at a we were at a, a Kentucky Derby themed party uh, raising money, oh, wow. for, uh, and I uh, used that story as a way to guilt trip people into spending money on us. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, you know, you got to have that. You got to have that uh, that angle there. That's gonna, gonna uh, yeah, out a bunch. It, when, and it's I, I shouldn't say guilt trip people. I mean, that's kind of a, right. that's crass, that, but um, and, you know, and, and you know you know trying to raise money for for an organization and uh, it's we're it's all volunteer run you know we they 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 do pay a veterinarian um they pay for for uh, the the property uh in which the horses are so yeah when you're ready you will tug at the heartstrings would be a better uh a better yeah. way of saying it That's a, yeah but either way you know we don't yeah i know but, i know what you but, mean Rusty, when you're when you're, when your heartstrings are tugged at, you feel guilty if you don't spend money. It's like, okay, fine, I'll buy the, right. I'll, buy the I'll do the whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'll, you guys are uh, giving you that grant, gonna give you that, uh, gonna buy this thing at the auction. You know who's really bad about uh, about guilting you into buying shit? Girl Scouts. Yeah, and you know what? They're cookies. I would rather buy cookies from the grocery store. And give them twenty bucks. Them eat their cookies. Their <laughs> cookies are they're substandard to other cookies. Oh, so Girl Scout cookies are substandard. That's a hot take, yeah. man. Yep. Bo -bo -bo -bo. Coming down on the Girl Scouts. I'll give them money, but yeah, I don't. 
I, I would tell them that there was this store up in Minnesota, um, Hy-Vee. I don't remember if you remember Hy-Vee. Uh, it was one of the grocery stores there. And uh, so they have like a, a private label, you know, they're the generic brand where they're able to, you know, take whatever and put their, you know, Hy-Vee brand, whatever cookies on there. Those were better than the Girl Scout cookies. So shout out. I'm yeah. leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah. yeah. I'm leaving. Shout See ya. Yeah. <laughs> I I people people don't want to want to hear that. Uh the Girl Scouts don't <laughs> have the the good cookies there. They're good. What, They're just not the best. What you need to do is you need to have your local Girl Scout chapter um collaborate with local chefs in your area. And I'm saying this because I've been a part of this event twice. It's a, it's a Girl Scout cookie event that they have for the launch here, the chapters, the Girl Scouts of San Jacinto. And so it's like uh, Houston and surrounding counties. And so they have local area chefs come and make desserts using Girl Scout cookies. And they are Ooh. incredible. That's and yeah. Good idea. And so I that's, think they so that's what you gotta you gotta organize that for uh 20 for the 2024 season i like it i like uh and then i hope that they're able to use those again for something if for whatever their uh you know whatever their restaurant is that they have and be able to with every time someone orders it you know give a sl slight bit of the portion to the girl scouts and then with you know getting to use their uh their likeness and everything pay the, yeah pay a little licensing fee and everyone's everyone's happy everyone's got some good food to eat and get to help out the girl scouts and um, it's it's something to see how creative these these chefs can get with cookies because you would think okay well what am i supposed to do with it do i just shred it in the blender and use it as a powder for to top a pudding or what like that's about as creative as i can get and that's not even really creative but uh seeing what these people do is it, it was this this year in particular it was mind-blowing the last one i went to was in 2020 right before covid started um yeah, yeah it was it's wild it's just uh there's a reason why they're world-class chef world-class chefs and i'm not so yeah well did did things change much there during covid and Houston, did, it, did anything really change? Not really, man. Sort of business as usual. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's strange because <clears throat> um, we're in this really. Houston is a very it's a it's a special town uh, because we're in Texas, and let's be honest. Texas is the greatest state in the union. It's Texas and the other 49 bitches. Just throwing that out. But at the same sure. time, um, a lot of people in Houston don't really like Texas uh, for whatever reason. And, uh, uh, you know, it's all ideology. And so it, it, it's, and without diving into all the, you know, all of that, because I don't sure. like, Yeah. Um, so it was for some time it was split down the middle, but it was funny because um, when the governor started opening the state back up and you got the resistance from like, no, we're not ready. You just want people to die and blah, 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 blah. But, but, but seeing how the majority of the city didn't really vote for the governor. When things were opened up, you saw a lot of people out and about. And so it's like, ah, you really yeah. don't have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you're signaling to the batshit crazy people in your house who probably want to have five masks on and never go out yeah. for the rest of their lives. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it was just, um, but. I mean, we, look, we coexist. Um, yep. It, we coexist, yep. And you've got, you know, you got, I think you've got batshit crazy people 
who think ever every. who have in every ideology. Dude, I'm yeah. in Florida. <laughs> right. Yeah, you you have uh you have Florida, Florida man, Florida woman down there. Uh you type in any day of the year, you type in Florida man and then any day of the year in the Google or Florida woman and any day of the year in the Google, and you got you have a story. Dude. You, uh, <clears throat> you know it's wild, and I'll just say this and just it was objectively objectively i found it hilarious um so that prefacing that last year we were over here in south walton and we're driving down 30a and 30 there, there's depending on what part of 30a i mean there's some badass beach house mansions and so we we're driving down 30a and there was one of these just it had to have been easily at least five to seven million dollar house oh. and draped from the balcony was a blue and white banner that said trump won <laughs> and i'm like that's the most florida thing i've seen yep. <laughs> it's like well that's that's like, them doing their thing you florida, know and uh, even even the even the rich florida man is a florida man yep <laughs> right and you gotta it's it's what it is and you know you gotta have every bit of and objectively speaking i thought yep. it was hilarious yep and objectively speaking is what it everything should pretty much be anyway um yeah. and there's nothing all... wrong with it right <laughs> yeah see the absurdity in everything yeah and <laughs> uh so then you you're in you were in the pod the podcast and then when was it you were gonna say hey i'm gonna write a book what where did that where did that come from to just have a terrible transition and just go right into uh how where 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 did the book come from where uh well i have been writing for a few years so um my first book was in 2019 and then i wrote another one kind of sort of I, I wrote the other one almost right after I released this, the first one. I wrote the second one almost right after because I got pissed off um, because About of an what? In, in a press. Um, because of what? I channeled my anger into writing the second book. And then I was revived. COVID happened. And I'm like, eh, I was one of those people that was like, there, there, there were the people in the creative space who were like, I'm doubling down. Fuck everybody. You know, and then there was the, the, the other side, which is like, eh, I don't know. It feels kind of weird. And so that was me. I just like, I don't know. And plus, when you're going to do something like that, you have a lot of publicity and you go out and you do things. Of course, you and I are on Zoom. We're on a podcast. But um, there's nothing like getting out and doing a signing or meeting people um, who who want to meet you back. And so yeah. I was like, yeah, 2020 is just not the year for it. Um, I think musicians were better positioned to do that because they can just record their music and then just be played on the radio and on the internet. Um, and plus my headspace wasn't there. Um, so I figured instead of revising the second book, I just start writing a, a third book. Um, and so I'll allow me to ruin your Christmas came out and I, um, I wanted to get it out sooner rather than later. So what I did for the first time was um, um, I I, uh, I outlined it, and so I knew I knew the different beats of the story, and I knew how it was gonna. I knew someone was gonna get killed at the end, and so I left myself and I gave myself enough structure to where I knew what the characters looked like, what their fatal flaws were, what, what was cool about them and um, all the basic stuff. Right. Then I had, I had it structured by sections and uh, still giving myself a little bit of freedom, uh, still giving myself a little bit of freedom to, to go off the beaten path and to kind of let the, the subconscious mind take over and and do something you know that was not previously intended and so that that was one of my questions was when you're writing are you doing it writing an outline are you doing stephen king and just 
taking a whole bunch of uppers and staying up for days and just right until you never, until you just sort of end it. And you're like, I got, I got to there. And um, yeah. 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 First, the first two books, man, they were, they were, uh, they were pants. That's what we call it. You either you're a plotter or a pantser. So fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And, and those were pants and needed desperate restructuring. Um, in fact, there was one point in the second book where the, the developmental editor said, you lost me as a reader. And I'm like, okay, that sucks. All right. Um, so yeah, I don't like, I didn't like that. So um, I plan this one uh, way more heavily. Um, so instead of pantsing a book and saying, oh, this one's going to be about Rusty and Freddy's adventures and then just see where what happens. Yeah. It's like Rusty and Freddy's adventures in Houston, Texas, in the middle of the night, and Freddy turns on Rusty. And then what happens when they drive through Fifth Ward? And then Freddy gets carjacked, and then Rusty switches sides and then ends up getting revenge. So that's like a little more, that's kind of oversimplifying it, but as you see, it's more specific. Um, yeah yeah so the, it's it's specific but also allowing for uh for for different twists and turns which i didn't think was possible which is why i never outlined the first two but holy shit i i actually took quite a few turns in the with the third book which were fun you kind of know where you're getting to what you got to have to get to and be able to use that as a reference point um you know, it's kind of, can be, you know, a nice little, little help and something that I've, yeah, I've had trouble. I've, I've outlined some things and they, they turn out definitely different than when I just, yeah, you know, go by the seat of my pants, but it's sometimes this does is a smarter idea to get it that way. And, yeah. but, you know, not, not one way is right or wrong. It's just, yeah, they're both both a little different and then so then do you when you're writing do you have a uh do you have a notebook do you have bar napkins do you have a typewriter a computer do you have a chisel and stone what do you like to uh, get your stuff on i i typed out the first book on uh on my mac and then the second the second and third books i wrote longhand and then i have a, a shelved novel that i wrote longhand during covid as well <clears throat> I did some writer sprints 30, 45 minutes at a time. And I just enhanced that one too and just wasn't with it. So it'll never see the light of day. Uh, in fact, when I'm on my deathbed, I'll probably end up giving it to my grandkids and saying, burn this fucking book. Uh, don't you dare try and make grandpa some sort of uh, um, post mortem hero or of any sort. Right. And then. So where, where are you with, uh, cause I mean, there's one thing that, uh, might be an interesting route, uh, with combining AI, where, where are you? Cause I mean, one of those things like with, with everything else creative that, that we've been able to do, it's, it's soul crushing, but at the same time, kind of cool. And it's like, if, it's it's a hard hard line and i'm i'm stuck with it every day i mean like like i was saying at the beginning before we started that i have so many tubs full of all my music shit is all analog there's some little bits of digital stuff thrown in there but i mean how much stuff and then people you know being able to just take ai and throw it together but it's going to open up the doors of so many more things that can be accomplished by it and so where are you kind of with ai and writing and i would as far as writing i don't i don't know that i'll ever use it to write anything maybe i'll i'll what i have been using ai for with regards to backing up i'll never use it to write a novel um point like point blank i don't think that you can take you can't write you can't write with soul using AI. If you wanted to have a funny outline for something, maybe for a kid's book or whatnot, 
uh, I guess you could. And I tinkered around with a short story um, on just, just for shits and grins. Yeah. Uh, it was a traveling podcaster who went back and talked to George Washington. And it was decent, but I mean, chat GPT only gives you so many words and its response, unless it's changed in the past month, which it probably has, and I just need to revisit. But yeah, I, I can send you a uh, something. There's a, uh, an, what are, not an add-on, uh, what are those called? Um, I can't think what they're called, extension. There's an extension, chat GPT extension that has a whole bunch of new uh, stuff okay. on it. and. and I thought it was funny, um, but I mean, I would never, I don't, I don't I, ever, I wouldn't be comfortable revising that and putting your name on it that I did. Yeah, I mean, um, this, this is a Freddy Cruz book. What is, what is really cool and helpful uh, with the writing aspect of what I do for my business is having it outline business plans, having it outline blogs, having it outline show notes. Um, yep. Questions that I should be asking of, you know, any person from whatever industry. And so that to me is really helpful. So then what I take, I take the, I enter the prompt and then I get the answer and then I'll go and I'll send it, I'll email it to myself, pull it up in a pages document, and then I will um, tweak according to how I write. And then I'll verify. Yeah. Whatever it says, um, whatever it states as fact, I'll go back and verify either through a client or someone else. Like, hey, um, I was using chat GPT for this and I wanted to verify with you as the professional and my client that this is correct. Oh, actually, this is spot on. But this one, this part is not. So don't use that. So it has a long, I think. As fast as it's moving, it still has a long way to go. And I think eventually it's going to be, I think we're going to, we have to eventually embrace it. The same way farmers had to embrace the plow, the same way they had to embrace the tractor, the same way carriage people had to embrace cars, the same way we eventually had to embrace computer technology. And now we tap our fucking credit cards without even thinking twice we <laughs> are inconvenienced if it doesn't read our credit cards so right <laughs> it, it's always it's going to be here whether we like it or not and uh, there are a lot of people in my old radio world who are just hell-bent on not embracing it and i'm like you know what that's too bad for you because it could help you a lot um in what you do and you're going to be one of these people who is going to be begging for fucking universal basic income because you refused to embrace what was eventually going to come. And I'm sure yeah. there, were, there were probably farmers who refused to embrace the plow and who refused to embrace the tractor. And there are people who, I mean, if we're being honest, the mass media lambasted the internet saying that it was going to be a fad. There was the one commercial that I think with the... Um, one of the major news networks that they put in the commercial, like, oh yeah, it's a passing fad. Well, it's here to stay, just like podcasting, just like uh, the internet. It's uh, it's decentralizing everything and making making it making things uh, a lot easier for people who are having to wear many hats. And so, yeah, yeah. rant over. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's great being able to use it for show notes and for and I mean just that alone. Uh, is huge and and a business plan. I three four years ago I had to write a business plan, and uh, I had someone helping me too. And that still took me like five six revisions. Took me you know I don't know probably twenty hours to make. And then now I can do it in two and a half minutes and have it better than what I did before. And um, I mean that's something that someone who has someone has to wear many hats and has no fucking clue how to do that, be able to not have to worry about that part and be able to focus on maybe they're coming up with the, you know, the next cure for something and they're stuck on not having a, a business plan or not having a, you know, some small little part, just being able to have someone else 
have that being taken care of and be able to focus on what's important. Yeah. And, and the thing too, is that it's not going to replace creativity because we have to go back at the end of the day and revise and, and tweak according to what, um, and, and as a copywriter myself, it's writing and writing in a certain voice. And so writing in certain voices for certain clients and writing in my voice, it's um, going back and taking those, those chat GPT answers and inserting your voice in it. So it's not an end all be all. And yeah. I've noticed people who I follow on LinkedIn where it's obvious they just took the prompt and they copy and pasted the answer and put it in a LinkedIn post because what I've found with chat GPT is that it can be redundant. And so that's what makes some of the answers long. And so I'm like, yeah, someone didn't go back and someone didn't go back and, and revise it or yeah. edit it. Just took it right off. Yeah. And right off. And yeah. hey, look, power to them. I mean, this person yep. is way more successful than I am. So uh, there's there's that too. Um, but it is what it is, man. And I think that there was some, because I was thinking about this. I've been thinking a lot about it because I've been using, I've found, I have found myself using it more in the past month than uh, in previous months. And I'm like, I think it's almost like if you were to think about it as a hamburger and you've got, McDonald's and Burger King, but then you've also got Chili's, but then you've also got the uh, Shake Shack, but then you've also got the burger that they serve at freaking Morton's Steakhouse. And so it's going, there are certain utilities, there's certain like, dude, if I'm hungry and I haven't eaten, it's four o'clock and I haven't eaten since dinner time yesterday, um, and McDonald's is right there, it's quick and easy. I know it's not going to completely suck. Uh, the chances yeah. are, oh, I mean, let's be honest, I like McDonald's burgers, so they're not paying me to say that. Um, I'll <laughs> yeah. get a double cheeseburger, and I know that it will be, I won't die of food poisoning, uh, knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if I'm food to go out with my wife and I want to have a beer, I can go down to, uh, we're in Florida, right? And we can go down to AJ's and I can have a beer and a, and a kick-ass burger with awesome scenery and and if my kids didn't want a burger, they can order whatever else they want. So it's yeah. all body and, and utility and how you want to uh, incorporate it. But I do think that um, people who ignore it are doing so at their own peril, man. I think so too. And it's, it's a, it's a hard one. That's like, okay, well, yeah, it's, yeah, there's just so much that it can, yeah, it's going to be hard to, and I don't know. I, at first, I, I was like, ah, I, I don't like this, but I was just intrigued by every bit of it. And just, I couldn't stop watching videos on it or messing around with it. And just one of those things, just telling everyone about it. Um, I don't know. Dude, I like, you're going to get to a point, man, where you're going to be in a fucking self driving car going to going to wherever you're going and you're going to be on your on your iphone 25 or samsung galaxy s 100 and you're going to enter chat gpt to create a logo for your 10th book right right and you know what i'm okay with uh also the self-driving cars 90 percent of the time there's parts of it that scare me a little bit but I, I think I trust a computer, something of that more than I trust some other drivers. But then there's parts of it that are a little unsettling, you know, such as if it, you know, locks me in and drives me to the uh, police station because of something I said on a podcast, that could be a little, little off. But uh, as far as just getting me from point A to point B, I'm, I'm cool with that. I can, I can sit back and watch the scenery and not have to worry about things and i never thought of it that way though man can you imagine just being one of those cars and you're on instagram <laughs> or you're on twitter and you accident not intentionally you accidentally hit the like button or hit the retweet button and it's yep. something like it's something that you see that you're just totally put off by but you accidentally like it and then all of a sudden the doors are locked 
and, and then like you're, you're uh there's something in the front seat and then it who pushes you all the way back and then loops your fucking arms down yeah. <laughs> yeah. please stay here until the police arrive it's <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's for your own good you'll you'll be be able to be re rehabilitated and so so where where is anyone going to find what they need to do to get a hold of you to find your work to listen to your work to see your work read your work where are people going to do that yeah man uh thank you for that so next month i've got allow me to ruin your christmas which is christmas in july and so um, uh, there's a big push for that so if you are in the mood for something that is not Hallmark Channel, that's not Lifetime Channel, that you want some nefarious characters that do really horrible things to another, um, that is going to be the book you. Plots and twists and turns galore. And uh, I've got the new podcast that's also launching in July as well. And that is Cruise Through HTX. You can link up with me at freddycruise.link. Awesome. There's a, I, I lived so like a year or two ago, or I don't know, I moved six months ago, seven months ago. Uh, I was living in Salt Lake City and uh, they uh, they do all like most of the Hallmark Channel movies there. And um, my condolence. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so there was this. So the person who made them teamed up with uh, Vince Vaughn and the, the kid from Christmas Story. And they made like a spoof on Hallmark movies with her. And uh, that came out just kind of recently. But uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting one. That was a fun one. That was it was wild uh, being there and being with because they're, they're saying shit and fucking all this stuff, like just, <laughs> you know, doing improv for most of the filming and you, i'm just yeah. sitting there with a bunch of mormons just sit like blown away and oh man it was it was a blast but um yeah dude fucking everyone check out freddy don't don't listen to me talking about whatever the fuck i was just talking about um get a hold of freddy is more the important part check out his work and make sure you you're following him and listening and, and reading his stuff so Freddie, thank you so much. I enjoyed getting to talk to you. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I like getting to know you. So thank you. Really? Yeah. And uh, you have an awesome rest of your day. And enjoy the Florida. Don't become Florida man June 5th, 2023. Um, <laughs> unless you want to. Okay. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And that's back. Freddy Cruz, cool guy. I like talking with him. I cut him off at the end. Sorry about that, Freddy. I didn't mean to. I didn't know you were going to say thank you, um, but I, I cut you off anyway. Um, sorry. So thank you guys for listening on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN. Uh, you know, like I said, check out the other shows on there. When the Gloves Come Off, the Thinking Man's Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is it with Lizzie and Saved by the Ben. And thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Fred Ben Savage is fuck. Uh, hypnosis is great. Hardcore comedy. Sockemup.org. And ooh, I think I said Stoner Eats and Stoner Eats. So thank you guys for listening. Like, share, subscribe, pass it around. Let someone new hear it. Go go out and buy buy his stuff. Buy his stuff. Listen to his stuff. Get on it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And that is the show, man. Boom. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Ernest! Ernest!
Ernest! <coughs> yes, Pee Wee. You brought the snacks, right? Oh, yeah, you guys, you get this some extra bonus content here. Uh, all kinds of bonus features. And you guys, you'll hear all about this. This is going to be mind blowing stuff. You'll never believe this, but this is breaking news right here, right?